Hello, Tom for another Man in Great Book Review. And since we're in the midst of the World Series, today's book is a baseball book. It's called The Chicago Cubs, Story of a Curse by Rich Cohen, published by FSG in 2017. It's 274 pages. The most paradoxical sports team in the U.S. would have to be the Chicago Cubs. For the last century, the Cubs have alternated between being unlucky and complete incompetence. The 108-year gap between the World Series championships is by far the longest of any major league team. And yet, no American team in any sport commands the loyalty that the lovable losers do. For years, the Cubs have been the most profitable major league team no matter what their position in the standings. The Cubs' position as perennial division doormat changed in 2016 when they became the dominant National League team, winning the series in a dramatic seventh game. The transformation and the long run up to it are the subject of Rich Cohen's The Chicago Cubs Story of a Curse. Cohen, the co-creator of the HBO series Vinyl, has suffered along with hordes of other Northsiders since he was a kid. Cohen effectively interweaves his personal love affair with the history of the team. Most poignant are the chapters on the 1984 team season when the Cubbies won 96 games and their division only to fall to the lowly San Diego Padres 3-2 to in the league championship series. Cohen places much of the blame on the team's long series drought on team owners, William Wrigley and his son Philip. Neither man was willing to spend the kind of money needed to fill the top-notch team. Instead, they promoted the stadium, Wrigley Field, as a great place for Chicagoans to spend a summer afternoon. Their scheme worked as fans filled the ivy-covered stadium year after year. The trend continued when the Chicago Tribune took over ownership. Airing club games on their satellite TV station, WGN, guaranteed them a profit and mitigated any incentive to spend cash improving the lineup. Cohen also blames the fans for the team's long postseason absence. Their loyalty meant that the owners could get away with fielding second-rate teams year after year. Many Cubs fans, though, put the blame squarely on a goat. In 1945, a bar owner brought his mascot, a billy goat, to the game. Upon being rejected, uh, ejected by the management, the tavern owner declared that the Cubs would not win until the goat was allowed back into the stadium. The Cubs made it to the series that year, but lost in seven games to Detroit. It would be 71 years before the Cubs would be back in the World Series. It was only after the Tribune sold the Cubs to a group led by investment banker Thomas Ricketts that the team began to the turnaround that led to the 2016 victory. The chapter on how Ricketts broke the traditions and revamped the team is the most enlightening part of the book. But Cohen's book isn't just a straightforward history of the Cubs. He makes room for short biographies of the many colorful characters who wore Cubs uniforms over the last century. There is, of course, Mr. Cub himself, Ernie Banks. Banks was undoubtedly the greatest major leaguer never to play in a postseason game. Banks' charm and enthusiasm for the game brought many fans out to cheer him on. But the fans' love of Banks made the front office reluctant to get let go of him after his baseball skills declined. There's also the tragic story of Grover Alexander, a talented pitcher who was sent to fight in France during World War I. He returned alcoholic, shell-shocked, and subject to epileptic seizures. He nevertheless came back to the Cubs and proved an effective pitcher until his erratic behavior and frequent absences led the team to trade him. Alexander would end up dying alone in a cheap hotel room in 1950. The volume concludes with a detailed retelling of the 2016 series championship between the Cubs and the Cleveland Indians, another team with a long World Series drought. Cohen, who attended the game, uh, Game 7, adds a number of details that only an in-person observer would notice. After blowing a 5-1 to one lead, the Cubs' collapse is halted by rain. Cohen wandered around the soggy stadium wondering if the Cubs' A curse was real. What happened after the rain stopped is like something out of a 1930s B-movie. Anyone who missed the game or has forgotten the conclusion to the series would do well to read Cohen's account. These and other stories make the Chicago Cubs an ideal volume for any baseball fan or anyone interested in Chicago and its history. The book is The Chicago Cubs. The author is Rich Cohen. This has been another Man in Great Book Review. Thanks for watching.